Hey all, Heba here. So uh, today I'm going to tell you in this video why I personally, just me, have chosen uh, this bad boy here, the PlayStation 5, as my you know, primary console going forward. And uh, instead of the little fatter one over here, the uh, PlayStation or the Xbox <laughs> Series X. So uh, I started out with the uh, Xbox Series X and I bought it on release date. And I always do that when any console I can. And uh, thinking back, if I had the opportunity, I probably would have purchased the uh, PlayStation 5 uh, right off the bat. But the thing is, the thing was, uh, PlayStation 5s were just impossible to get back then. So uh, I decided, okay, I'll get the, uh, the Series X and then I'll just hang on to that uh, and see if, you know, I want to keep it. And uh, the reason for thinking that way, like not being really sure about the X, uh, is because the generation before I was actually primarily PlayStation 4 um, and not so much uh, into the uh, the Xbox area. I did have both of them, like I did have the uh, Xbox here, I still have it. And then, yeah, I still play it sometimes, but you know, not a lot. I can play all the same games on the Series X, so. Uh, um, but let's, let's just go back in time here for a, a second uh, before I reveal to you all the reasons why PlayStation 5 actually won out in this uh, little contest here, my little private console contest. <laughs> um, look, I've been playing consoles and games in general for 30 years. My first console was a Commodore 64 mm -hmm, back in, I don't know, sometime in the 80s. And uh, since then, I've been purchasing every console that's ever come out except for the really obscure Japanese ones but all the ones that's you know released in Europe and US are purchased like Nintendo, Sega, PlayStation obviously, Xbox, uh, yeah you name it I've had it and uh, 10 years ago I worked as a uh, game reviewer for many sites in Europe and uh, I did that for I guess from the early 90s on to the mid 2000s, something like that. So uh, I got to try every game out there on every platform there possibly was. I guess sometimes I had to review FIFA 2001 for you know four platforms, including Game Boy and stuff like that. So I uh, I got a pretty good idea of uh, which platforms are better for games and multi-platform games in particular. Uh, but I haven't done that for a long time now. But uh, these days I still obviously you know, keep up and um, PlayStation 5 has won me over really. Uh, but anyway, I'm not a console fanboy. Like back in the beginning, I had uh, like, well, I started the PlayStation generation, right? So uh, like I had, the, I had a PlayStation, I had a Nintendo 64 and uh, um, actually I preferred the Nintendo 64 in that generation. I was really into platformers and it had some of the best ones like Donkey Kong 64. Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tui, uh, Super Mario, obviously. Um, so yeah, that was that was my favorite console, and I played it a lot. I also had the PlayStation, also played Metal Gear Solid and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, Nintendo was my, you know, main platform back then. Then, you know, the next generation happened, and uh, you know, PlayStation Two came out, which was a very good console. I really liked it. But uh, the Xbox also came out, and I actually preferred that uh, over PlayStation 2. And uh, obviously in the Nintendo console, we won't even talk about the GameCube. That was, you know, I don't know what that was. <laughs> the only good thing on GameCube was Mario Party, and it was just one game. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, I was, you know, primarily Xbox. And uh, that was because there was a lot of multi-platform games back then. Need for Speed was big and stuff like that. Uh, you know, uh, lots of other stuff. And multi-platform games just tended to run better on the Xbox. Uh, higher frame rate, uh, particularly. So that I made that my primary platform back then. And then if you jump to the next generation, right? PlayStation 3 coming out. I know Microsoft was all, oh no, what are we going to do? Our Xbox is called Xbox 2 and PlayStation is called PlayStation 3. So everybody's going to buy the 3. So they came up with the uh, ingenious... <laughs> Xbox 360 uh, as 
you know, silly as the name may be, that, in my opinion, is probably the best console ever released. Um, the achievement system, for one thing, was fabulous. I mean, the amount of time I spent trying to get achievements in games that I wouldn't otherwise have touched is, uh, was, was, well, mind-blowing, really. And, uh, you know, also Xbox Live was, like, it was on the first Xbox, but it was pretty crappy. On Xbox 360, it was, you know, it came into fruition and it was, it just blew Sony away. It was so much better. It was crazy good, actually. Um, and it was so easy to use. You had to pay a little bit of money to do it. Yeah, sure. But eventually Sony caught on to that one as well. So uh, in that generation, Xbox 360, definitely, definitely my favorite console and still is my favorite console. I just think it was near perfect. Like the console itself looked really cool. And the games were just uh, out of this world. Like it was, uh, it was an amazing console, and I still have fond memories of that thing. Then the next generation happened, and I don't know what. Well, I do know what Microsoft was thinking, because they gave us this thing here. I mean, uh, first of all, this is really ugly. It's not just ugly; it's fugly. Like you, and. It was just underpowered and it had this, excuse me, it had this absolutely ridiculous, not even accessory, but it was actually, at least for the first consoles, it was like included in the purchase, like it's called Kinect. And like, what a piece of absolute whatever that was. Um, but you know, Microsoft's strategy was like, oh yeah, let's make this entertainment center so we can get into the living room of everybody and yada, 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 yada. And yeah, that didn't go very well because this is a gaming console and a, like PlayStation 4 just blew Xbox One out of the water completely. Like Xbox One was so underpowered. It, was, it wasn't even funny. Um, like it's amazing that Microsoft just threw everything they had achieved with Xbox 360 out the window. No, no, we're not interested in that. We're just gonna give everybody this absolutely crappy console that can't play any games and is totally inferior to PlayStation 4. It was almost, it was all, it was absurd, really. Like they did make make up for it later on when they released this one here. Like the, can't even remember what it's called, but it's a more powerful Xbox One, really. And you know, yeah, that helped and. It kind of made me go back to Xbox. Um, I can't even remember why, uh, but I think it was more powerful than PlayStation 4, actually, I think. So you can see, I just jump back and forth. Whoever has the most powerful console with the best games is, well, that's the console I pick. So that brings us to the current generation. And like I said, I bought the uh, Series X, there it is, first. And, you know, I was very happy with it. It was really powerful and I like the look of it. It's, you know, it's different, but it's not weird or crazy or anything like that. And you can fit it in pretty much anywhere. It doesn't really take a lot of, you know, effort. And I uh, can't really say the same thing about the PlayStation 5, can you? Because this thing is just, it's just weird. And even the new slim version really isn't much better. They're both like, you're going to struggle to fit this thing in into any sort of living room or, I don't know some kind of like gaming furniture or something like that because it's just it's just weird um, but whatever like at least it's white i like white consoles so i couldn't get a white series x so i just bought a black one and but anyway at some point uh place in fires were actually available to buy wow yeah and uh i purchased one and i tell you immediately i realized okay this is uh superior in you know, not so much in the multi-platform titles, because if you play multi-platform titles on these uh, consoles here, you will see that, you know, it's pretty much the same. Like you said, play Assassin's Creed on Xbox, PlayStation. That's minor differences. Same thing with Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Yeah, it's like, yeah, but the same thing. Feels exactly the same. And frame rate is the same. Resolution the same. I guess not much tomb raider same thing like all the multi-platform titles they run about the same on both consoles like world of warships legends is you know a uh, an outsider there because you don't get 
4K60 on the PlayStation yet for like odd reasons, I don't know, but whatever. Like war gaming's problem, I guess. So uh, why did I end up picking the PlayStation 5? Because some of you have noticed in my videos, I've switched from having everything as uh, Xbox to actually having everything as PlayStation 5, except for World of Warships Legends, because I can't move that game from Xbox. All my stuff is on that account, and even though I don't play it anymore, it's still stuck there. So uh, that's really the only reason I'm not selling my Series X, because in case I want to go back to Legends, that's where all my stuff is. So yeah, but other than that, everything else happens on PlayStation 5. And also, I don't want to play, oh, I don't want to pay for PlayStation Plus and Game Pass at the same time. I mean, there's no need for that. So, uh, obviously, I pay for PlayStation Plus, but I don't pay for anything on Xbox um, anymore. I used to, but not anymore. So, what is the reason that I, you know, just recently, well, I guess not recently, but figured out that, hey, hmm, PlayStation is much better. Well, like, first thing is really, you know, the controllers, because obviously it's what you touch when you play. And, you know, the Xbox controller has been more or less the same since Xbox 360. And sure, it's not bad. I like this controller. Um, I just don't like the quality. And um, I think it's, it's a little bit cheap. Um, it doesn't feel like, like, it's very clicky and like it's especially in white i like the white color but it does make it look like a little bit more fisher pricey if you know what i mean and all this cl clicky clicky noise here and when you press the buttons i don't like that the triggers are damped i like that um but it's still not good enough i think this is not this doesn't feel like quality uh, even though it is a and I know there's an Elite controller as well, but it's marginally better, but not something that I would consider, you know, Apple quality. Because these consoles here, they cost like $500, $600. So like, I think we deserve something better than, you know, this toy feeling here. So that brings me to the PlayStation controller. This is much better. It's still not Apple quality, nowhere near it, but like, it's not as clicky and fishy pricey and the, the buttons are damped better and the triggers also were uh, very nicely damped and it feels it's heavier I mean, that always makes it feel more expensive right and it's just better quality than the xbox controller it's not apple quality like i'm saying here but um it's closer to that quality and it's closer to the quality we deserve and then also the ergonomics like this just it's just better for me i like to have the analog sticks like this like uh, where they are you know parallel i don't like to have one you know up here and one down here it is like i don't know why that's a thing but that's a thing on xbox uh this is better um the controller is probably the main reason i'm you know in the playstation boat now because it's just better it's that simple um the one thing that isn't better about this controller here is the battery life. Um, it's actually, actually a little bit disappointing. The Xbox controller lasts, like, I mean, depending on what batteries you put in, I mean, because that is probably another good thing about the Xbox controller here. You can put normal batteries in it if you wish. So if you buy really high quality ones, um, you can have it run for a very long time. While the PlayStation controller, it does, it lasts about half the time of the Xbox controller to my like sort of rough guesstimation here. So uh, controllers, well, PlayStation wins hands down. There's no really, <laughs> there's no contest. But one area where Xbox actually wins is the headset department because the Xbox headset might not look very nice, but uh, it's much better than the PlayStation headset because uh, you got the little microphone here that actually picks up your voice better and the sound is just much better here um the bass is far better and these ones are okay and they're like supposed 3d version well whatever ability is like uh, okay if you say so but um well, yeah but it doesn't really come down to headphones does it i mean in the end yes xbox is better but yeah 
doesn't really matter much. Uh, what does matter, on the other hand, is the accessories that you can get for your PlayStation 5 here. And the most important accessory uh, that you will need at some point is to expand the memory of your consoles, right? And an Xbox, you can do that as well. There is a, hard to see, but there is a, an expansion slot here where you can pop in what we call memory cards in the old days and expand it by another terabyte, I believe it is. Um, they're very expensive. They cost, I don't know, a few hundred dollars for one of those. And yeah, okay. PlayStation, you can do the same thing, except you just purchase an SD, um, like a special SD memory block, and you like you take off one of these white panels here and you pop it in, just like in the days when you would put in you know, more RAM in your computer. So it's actually cool these days where, you know, a manufacturer allows you or even encourages you to open up their, you know, fancy thing here and, you know, take a screwdriver and, you know, expand it with stuff. Mm, that's, that's cool. It takes me back. So uh, anyway, it's far cheaper. It's half the price of Xbox and you can, uh, you can put pretty much any size in you want. I think it supports up to 16 terabytes, which is, you know, a lot. Uh, I think I put two terabytes extra in mine and uh, that's enough because you know games are huge these days um, it's not unusual to have like a 500 gigabyte game and uh, both comes consoles comes with around one terabyte of storage so that means you can have two games on them I mean yes you can move them to external hard drives and then plug those in and transfer them when you want to play but that's a lot of trouble like I highly recommend that you just expand the memory, like the SSD memory in there. And uh, doing that on PlayStation is far cheaper, far cheaper. So uh, yeah, and you can also have a lot more memory on this. Like I said, up to 16 terabyte, maybe 32, I don't know, but more than you will ever need. So uh, that's the first point here. The second point is you can also get the PS portal for this PlayStation 5. I don't have it right now, but I've I lent it to a friend but I do have it somewhere and um, it's awesome and uh, I really like it. And at least, you know, Sony gives you the opportunity. You don't have to play on your tiny mobile screen or your iPad when you're away. You can actually get something with a proper controller on the side. I like that. Another thing I really like with a PlayStation 5 is this thing here, you know, the PSVR 2. This is great. This is, this is, awesome <laughs> i don't know why sony actually did this because it must cost them a lot of money to develop this thing and i don't think it's been selling very well but um if you have one you're in for a world of like amazing stuff uh if you haven't played resident evil 8 or resident evil 4 on the psvr2 headset then you haven't played those games at all because the experience is just a hundred times better than what you get if you just play it normally on the flat tv i Playing those games on the PSVR 2 makes the whole purchase of the headset worth it. Trust me, it's that good. Sure, there are games on PSVR that's like trash and just don't play them. <laughs> and then there are games that are absolutely amazing. And I'm just waiting for Skyrim to get updated to PSVR 2 so I can play it on this. And uh, yeah, you won't see me for a while then. <laughs> There's also another thing that's good about the PlayStation 5, and it's the fact that it has a USB-C uh, connector. It's very handy, uh, especially if you are, you know, someone like me who has a YouTube channel and you you are using the console to store or to, you know record footage, and then you gotta get it in and out all the time. So this is just much easier. But I realize it's a niche area, but it's very important to me, and uh, that brings me on to another reason that PS5 is just better. I'll just put it as you can see a little bit here. Um, for someone who, you know, creates videos, one thing is you can just stream directly to YouTube from the PlayStation 5. You don't, of course, it's better to have a capture card and all that stuff, which I also do have. But if you're lazy and just want to do a quick stream, it's much easier. You can just, you know, set it up, get started, put your headset on and that's it. Xbox, you can only stream directly to Twitch and it's kind of kind of crap so yeah, I wouldn't uh, to me this is much better much much better 
Another thing about the PlayStation 5, when you're sticking here in the video area, is that it automatically saves the last hour of gameplay. Um, that's great. So uh, I think Xbox saves five minutes or something like that, which is... So on Xbox, you'll have to record all the time in case something cool happens. While on PlayStation, you don't have to. Uh, if something cool happens and you you want to show the like the lead up to that and stuff like that, you can just like save the last 15 minutes, the 20, 30, 45, one hour, whatever you need. It's a lot more flexible that way. And uh, it's also a lot easier to export the clips back and forth, like I said before. So uh, yeah, for someone like me, that's very important. All right, the last thing I want to tell you about here, the last reason I chose PlayStation 5 over Xbox, uh, it comes down to games. Surprise. Well, I mean, that's why we have these machines here, right? And uh, you want to play games on them and you want to play the best games. And I'm sorry to say, but PlayStation, this generation is just absolutely whipping Xbox with uh, exclusives and just generally better games. Um, I mean, let's have a look at, you know, the exclusives on Xbox. There's, you know, Halo, like Halo Infinite, that's like, that wasn't very interesting, if you ask me. I thought that was crap, to be honest. Uh, then there's Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is pretty good. Hmm, but you can play that on PC as well. But yeah, it's good. Uh, and then there's, uh, you know, the Forza games. Sure, sure. Forza Horizon is good. But Forza Motorsport, like you can have Gran Turismo on PlayStation 5, which I think is better. It's, you know, whatever. And uh, then there's Starfield. Like, what a disappointment that game was. Is that going to be the new Skyrim? Absolutely not. It's just so bad. Like, it's it feels like it was left in development 10 years ago and it came out. And I think I put in like 30 hours in that game and I am just never going back to it. I think it's, I think it's really bad. Silly, stupid game. Um, every time I play it, I think, oh, well, Skyrim is much better. And then I start playing Skyrim instead. So, yeah. So, yeah. Xbox, there's really nothing there to get yeah, that's not on PlayStation. There's like, what, like three titles or something like that, and that's it. While on the other hand, PlayStation 5 has Horizon Zero Dawn or Horizon Forbidden West. Both of those games are worth the purchase of the PlayStation on its own, in my opinion. They're some of the best games I've ever played, and I love them. And uh, yeah. Uh, Xbox doesn't have anything even remotely close to those games. Then there's Gran Turismo, like I mentioned earlier. Stuff like Ratchet and Clank and Sackboy and all that stuff. God of War. I don't play it much, but some people love it. And uh, Returnal. Mm, yeah, at least that's exclusive. That Xbox doesn't even have anything in like close to that. Stray was exclusive on Xbox for no, on PlayStation for a long time. I think it's coming to Xbox and PC at the moment, but yeah, who knows. And then of course there's The Last of Us uh, for PlayStation. There's lots of other exclusives that I don't really like, bring up here, but um, when it comes to games, the PlayStation 5 wins, like, obviously. <laughs> so uh, that's really it. That's why I have switched Everything I play from Xbox to PlayStation, some of the games that I had on Xbox that I was playing, other than World of Warships Legends, I have just purchased on PlayStation so I can play them there instead. And uh, yeah, I haven't really looked back. And I'm not really playing World of Warships anymore, so Xbox is just, you know, collecting dust. So yeah, that's why like PlayStation is just better. Like the controller is better, the games are better, the like the Hardware is better, not the hardware that runs games, because the games look exactly the same on both controls. But, but you know, the, the memory expansions and the way you export, import stuff is just way easier and much better thought out on PlayStation 5. So uh, it'd be interesting to see what happens next generation. There are rumors going around that Xbox is going to, you know, quit. Don't know. Let's see. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see. So I hope this kind of explained to you why... Um, I have switched completely from being an Xbox, uh, well, I'm not going to say fanboy because I'm not, obviously, <laughs> to being a uh, pure PlayStation player now. And it's simply because this is just a better fit for me. Uh, controller is better, games are better. That's it. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you out there.